Hello everyone, welcome back to the show. Uh, I'm just going to get right into it. Okay. These are some of the books that are for sale at Amazon.com. Ojibwe words and phrases. This is a handy reference guide to Ojibwe words and phrases. This is the Ojibwe we've been teaching on the Buju, Nanabuju podcast for over four years. Days of the week, months of the year, the seasons, prayers, animal names, the uh, seven grandfather teachings. It's not a dictionary. I always feel like I need to tell people that. But it is, if you have a beginning Ojibwe language class, or even a Ojibwe culture class at your school, this is a must-have book. Click the link to Amazon.com and uh, <laughs> order it today. But let's say you've got a you've got a preschooler. No, let's say You've got a, a mixed blooded, a Wisa Kode Winini, a person of mixed ancestry in your life. Maybe your daughter is, a, you know, 13, 12, 13 years old, and she's part Native American, part Anishinaabe, and part Chamokaman. A mixed blood is a fictional story. <laughs> This isn't a true story about a girl who's half vampire and half elf. And she comes from a family, a pretty loving family, really. But she gets sent to boarding school to learn how to become a vampire. And she doesn't make a very good vampire because she's half elf. Uh, and she meets a, an alien when she escapes from boarding school. And Santa Claus... Tries to round her up, bring her back. And it's a funny story. It's a sad story. It's, uh, I mean, they call it a young reader's story, but uh, I used all my English ma major powers to, <laughs> to, to do it. So uh, I'm pretty proud of it. It's, it's a pretty good book. But let's say you got a little kid, you got a four-year-old, you want to teach how to count to four or how to count to ten in Ojibwe. Well, Dog and Mangan is a, a counting book, a counting picture book. Dog speaks English and Mangan, he speaks, um, you know, Ojibwe. And they walk through the woods counting animals. So you learn animal names. You learn how to count to 10 in Ojibwe. Uh, it's also kind of cool because the seasons change just right before their eyes as they're just walking around. It starts out one season and goes through all four seasons. It's a, it's a beautiful book. Dog in Maingan. Which brings up the collection. Well, gibberish is a collection of comic strips I did that would teach an Ojibwe word of the day. Um, it's uh, it's just that, and it also has. Oh, I should have pulled that up too. It has the book I'm probably most proud of. Uh, Little cutie, a teddy bear's vision quest. That story is also part of this collection. This is an eight and a half by 11 full color, thick collection of my comic strips. And the story, the illustrated story of a teddy bear's vision quest called Little Cutie. Finally, uh, yes, I have no copyright whatever uh all of my work is self-published 
print on demand, whatever. Um, so you can, and I know many schools that have, because I gave them a uh, copy of an English Ojibwe coloring book. And they asked me, I said, hey, is it cool if we make photocopies? And I said, yes, of course. It's cool. Why would you want to order? <laughs> I mean, it's only like $8 or something. You know, hundreds of coloring book pages that teach Ojibwe words. But this is also available at Amazon.com. My crappy attitude, that's 100% free. <laughs> All right. Enough of the commercial. Um, so, yeah. Oh, I'm pretty sure that's still available too. In a Manji O. In a Manji O is a coloring book. This one's only like 40 pages or something. It's a coloring book that has the emotions. Just emo In a Manji O means to feel a certain way. And so this is like a kindergarten coloring book that has the Ojibwe word for happy, sad, scared, lonely, uh, hungry, and so whatever, tired. And you get to color a, you know, a little woodland animal from northern Minnesota. All my animals I, I draw in my books are live around here. I never use animals like you. You'll never see me illustrate a coloring book that has a lion or a giraffe or an elephant or a scorpion. I, I try to keep it regional. So we have wolves and deer and bear, squirrels, skunks, foxes. Fox, I guess we call it. Fish. <laughs> Um, human beings. Do I have a story there? Mazina Egan Winnini is a drawing man or an artist. My whole life, I realized, has been just a continual growth, evolution of my art and becoming an artist. Making these videos, doing the live stream Ojibwe language podcast, you know. To me, it's just the latest evolution in my comic strips. I feel like I've kind of gone three-dimensional comic strip. When I when I did these these are little comic strips are from my college days. I had a comic strip called Coffee House Five. And I wanted to have reoccurring characters that were appealing to read about. But also as a comic strip, my first interest and concern was to make it look cool. I wanted to draw appealing characters in a comic-y way. My style of art is sort of cute. I hate to say it. I don't draw realism. I draw comics, com you know, cartoons. And then when I got better at drawing black and white cartoons, I started doing illustrations and comic books. But the comic books were brightly colored and not very realistic. They were still cartoony. Um, then when I started doing children's books, my characters still kind of looked like, uh, you know, Archie or Doonesbury or Walt Disney, you know. Um, it didn't look like Spider-Man it wasn't realism, but it was like hyper appealing. It was still cute, you know, brightly colored and interesting to look at. 
Um, and in in a in a way, doing the Nana Buju podcast, I was actually trying to make kind of commercials for the book. You know, in a way, posting. So I started doing comic strips that would teach Ojibwe language. And it didn't have reoccurring characters except the animals. Like Osh, Jagag, Mukwa. Um, but I had all these books for sale on Amazon.com. And I said, and it, it was true, people did, like three or four people on occasion asked, how do you pronounce this long word in your comic strip? And so I said, well, that's when we decided we would start a show where we could pronounce these Ojibwe words. It would be more helpful in learning the language because that's so important to me, that you learn the language. What it really was, was it was so important that you click on this video, see something cute and appealing, but at the end of it, underneath, I'll be a link to this place where you can buy my books. You know? But then it just evolved. When I created Nana Buju, you know, you had to, what did I want to make them look like? You know, I put my bandana on them, a bone choker, that's kind of cool. Dressed them up, and you know what? He was pretty cute. When I, just, when I decided how it would look, how, you know, how much of the screen would he take? He started thinking about the background and what would be appealing pretty soon. He's living in a setting. Then Natasha comes along and there's an exchange. The subtext is revealed where, oh, those guys are really in love. <laughs> you know, and then I come along, the creator of it all, in this form and like you've seen on the show there's a lot of drawings of myself now my cartoon my cartoons are always mean no, I'm, and i thought that was really important really really important that i explained <laughs> this morning on Quitting weed, <laughs> number twenty-six, maybe. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate it. Uh, Gwetch is and done, and I will see you again.
Thank you, and good night. Good night. We love you. <laughs> Can you come off a man, minute one?